Finally understood humans. Folklore is a very intrinsic part of society regardless of region and has been used to control the human mind for a long time. The druids, ephahs, magicians, soothsayers, wizards, sorcerers, there are different kinds depending on the part of the world you come from, but the main objective is to control, gain a following, and manipulate, subject the fellow man. How do we detect this? Well, it comes with a wonder. See 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 9. Astonishment, something out of the ordinary, mostly in a tale that happened a while ago. Now, you cannot always trust the eyes. It may be diseased and aging or impaired or momentary and not apprehending the full picture, or even not enough time to process the sight, or it may be beyond your knowledge or education, or you cannot observe it and has to be retailed like the moon visit or film or acted out like some believe fiction is real because it is there before their very eyes but the concept is acting, not actual. See 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 11. Will we be deceived almost certainly? Yes. Will there be times when we hadn't or wouldn't grasp things as we ought? Absolutely. And will we be deceived subject to manipulation intentionally or otherwise? Indeed. No man is deception-proof, and the deceiver like a fraudulent person is also deceived, as he or she is likely to start to believe his or her own deception. Now, the detection type. Laziness, a strange one. But scripture warns about the slow-bellied Cretans known for their guile, see Titus 1.12. Christ extolled a guileless disciple, see John 1.47. But a lazy person can only eat by deceiving, eating of another's, usually deceptively, or by living a lie. For example, as in appearance, like the default expectation of a spouse who does not, he or she is maintained as spouse with all the expectations of that position, yet they defraud their partner by holding back. Ignorance. The ignorant will always be a victim of deceit. Take chemistry, for example. Some may think it's a recent subject, but if you must know, it is as old as day, practiced by several civilizations down the ages. But assuming in the 15th century, someone went from a knowledgeable to an ignorant community, practiced chemistry in the form of sedation, arousal, or healing, and is then labeled a sorcerer. Psychological. Some person who is aware of how the mind works can manipulate others who are less aware by making them or tricking them into doing something they thought themselves incapable of. Being unaware of the power of the mind, like bend a spoon without touching it, they have this knowledge but others who do not are befuddled by it. The human witness is powerful, yet mostly misused, so that we are meant to understand things we ought not and omit to grasp the things we ought. When we hear something, we tend to base our belief of what is said on the person speaking. They may have always spoken good words or we take them on face value. Friend, boss, family member, colleague, business, sales, adverts, marketers, etc. So we are subjective. Now we do think we are objective in hearing 100%, but that is rarely the case. You would often hear people quote another, oh, this man said, that man declared, and what they say is taken on board, believed without thought or question or trying to reconfirm. Another aspect, as alluded to already, is the spirit that we and our speaker, whosoever that may be, have, and it plays an important part in what we hear and go on to believe. Many spirits are in the world, saith the scripture, and we are warned as believers not to believe every spirit, see 1 John 4, 1. There are mainly two spirits in the world, each having a plethora of witnesses. The spirit we have or belong to would determine where we lean toward. Our appetites also play a part. When unclean, regardless of the party we belong to, we tend to be driven by it. Hence the warning about the wretchedness of the believer's body and its warring against the reborn and indwelling spirit. See Romans 7, 24. Yes, outnumbered but powerful still, like a magnet to metal, in this world of evil forces, surrounded by many, many temptations. Dare we delay to pray, here is one of the reasons we should be on our guard, putting on the spiritual armor, see Ephesians 6, 11, daily, lest we fall into serious temptation and destruction of the body, see 1 Corinthians 5, 5.
So what is it I finally grasped? That man has a powerful influence over man. Man only has man to hear in this world. See 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 11. Maybe the animals too if we are observant. Is a voice going to come from heaven? Exceptionally, God chose to speak to man through man as he knows our frailness and susceptibility. And the Bible is full of these occasions. See Hebrews chapter 1 verses 1 to 2. We are also allowed to speak to God, by the way, in prayer. So we tend to believe ourselves. A child will hang on the words of fellow glib children who can spin a yarn faster than a factory. Men and women will listen to social media, news, political speeches themselves, read books, newspapers for words from other men. We are so engulfed in each other's words and the world, can you see it any different? Should we listen to dogs or elephants occasionally as the group of elephants in Sri Lanka who ascended up the mountain in the wake of a tsunami and were spared while some humans perished? Now that is astonishing in itself. Well, as the highest being on this planet, it makes sense that we listen to ourselves. The Bible tells us we are to cross-check everything man says. See Acts 17, verse 11. Secularly, if a ruler comes and asks for something, there will be policies and laws of the land to cross-check against, and the same goes for any person leading in any capacity. As men, we may consult the Guinness Book of Records or go to a reputable school or consult a professional, be it a doctor, lawyer, anthropologist, or soldier, depending on what area we need expertise. Some may contend that types of civilization also play a part, and those of the Western Hemisphere may not understand the East and vice versa. Though thorough scientific research comes in handy, observation trials testing and sampling play a huge part in the phrase scientific truth. The fact that we have progression in medications and surgical procedures confirms that regardless of the source or type of science, there is always room for progress. So who do we listen to? Christ tells us to listen to both man and God, manifesting the genius of his incarnation which provides us a permanent representative before God the Father, in the flesh also. God rules and gives wisdom and power to men, rulers see Romans chapter 13 verses 1 to 3, so that we can have a relatively peaceful existence as mentioned in 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 2. Relative? Yes, because of man's fury there will be wars and rumors of wars. And if we neglect to pray, then of course, as per the prior quoted passage, peace will elude us. If God rules through man and gives wisdom to man, ultimately we listen to God. But mechanically we listen to both, as not all know God have been changed, so haven't that more natural affinity or penchant to listen to Him. The Bible gives us guidelines on how to listen. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. See Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. The Bereans checked the scripture after Paul spoke to them. Give unto Caesar his and God his. See Mark chapter 12, verse 17. Soldiers carry on soldiering. See Luke chapter 3, verse 14. Obey magistrates and rulers for the sake of peace in the land. Ministers, stick to your ministering and all other professions to theirs. See Romans chapter 12, verses 6 to 8. Husbands and wives, live according to your frame and frailty and weakness, loving one another, obeying the husband as unto God, hence the English phrase, charity begins at home. See Ephesians chapter 5, Colossians chapter 3, 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 11, and 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 1. Believers take heed as we are not fully there, so we must take cognizance of the wretched body by availing ourselves of the means of grace, remembering the fall, the build-up, the Christ coming, and looking forward to his return. We are to let our lives speak as the salt of the earth, as newborn people, which confirms a difference in our makeup compared to that of the unbeliever. Our lives should speak to them and we must be careful of our actions. See Philippians chapter 1, verse 27, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5, and 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 12. For in him we live and move and have our being, see Acts 17.28, finally has a fuller meaning. 
Like the creatures of the sea of which we say they move in the waters, we move in the physical hemisphere, the firmaments in between, and the spiritual. Either heavenly powers in heavenly places in Christ, see Ephesians 1.3, or in the Prince of the Air, see Ephesians 2.2, 2, the world's deposed leader awaiting his final judgment. Who speaks? God. Let all be silent before him. See Habakkuk 2.20. Him who is able to keep you. Encourages us that we who are his, live, work not in his domain, spiritual hemisphere in vain. See 1 Corinthians 15.58. The hymn, Let All the Earth Revere the Lord, follows. Let all the earth revere the Lord, sing praises to His name. We have the Lord's and joy we call His honors and His pain. Say to the God who shakes the stars, How mighty Lord art thou? Before our prayers, sin has passed, or our life is never. Oh, bless the God, I never cease, how much of me to pray. He keeps our maintains our peace, and guides us in our ways. Use in affliction, live again. He makes our grace shine. As bonds of fathers draw away the silver to return. Who waters deep and trying ways we march at night Share the joys of 